welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. Super excited to have you here today. My name is Sammy and on this channel we do DIYs with signs, upcycles, and there's always tons of laughter, which you will see in this video. Today we are going to be doing a mega video based off of all of the inspired dupe videos that I created in the past. I know y'all love the dupe videos, so why not just put it in one big one for y'all? So let's go ahead and get started. So here is our first Kirkland's inspirational piece. Now this is $100, the ones we're gonna make, we are making two 10 by 10s for around 16 bucks. So I'm pretty stoked about that. All right, you guys, so I got these mirrors. Um, they're from Joann's. Now, Joann's every season comes out with that aisle of like wood DIYs that like you can paint and everything. And after that season is over, they usually go all the way down to like 70%. That's when I got these mirrors. They've been sitting in my stash for a while. And when I saw that Kirkland's picture, I just knew what I needed to do. So these were really cool because they completely come apart. I was able to take the mirror and pop it right out of the back. That way I didn't get any paint on it or anything like that. Keep in mind, you can use the round mirrors from Dollar Tree and they have square mirrors, but I have never been able to find the square ones at my store. So I'm using these half wood beads I got on Amazon and I will leave them in the Amazon store link down in my description box. And I played around with the placement first and the pack of 100 did two of these 10 by 10 signs. So I laid them out first just to make sure I got my spacing right. And then I'm gonna take one by one, put a little bit of wood glue. This wood glue y'all is from Dollar Tree and it works great. And then I'm gonna put a dab of um, hot glue and that's gonna give it the immediate hold and that wood glue is gonna give it the forever hold. So I didn't want to put you through the agony of watching me put all of those on one by one. So we are finishing up here. I did do it to both of them, obviously. And now we're taking a uh, linen white by Rust-Oleum and I have a one inch chippy brush and I'm going and I'm kind of like dabbing this on and brushing it on. I want to get in between all of those beads. I wanna get on the side because the frame was kind of like a grayish color. And when you're getting the sides and when you're getting the inside, make sure you're brushing that on the sides of the beads as well and getting in all those little nooks and crannies there um, so that we can ensure that we're covering all of these up. Um, I loved these beads. They were, I feel like a little pricey. They were like 10 bucks for a hundred of them. Granted, I got two mirrors out of it, so I'm not that upset, but yeah, definitely a little bit more expensive, but you can also do this with just regular wood beads. All right, so now that that's all dry, we're gonna take our Antique Wax by Waverly, and I'm taking this stencil brush from Dollar Tree, and I am dipping it in the lid of the wax, and then I'm taking that bulk of like the color off of my brush, and then you can either dab it on, you can brush it on, but the goal of this is a dry brush. You don't want a ton of, of color on here. And this dry brush gives me like the exact color I'm going for. It's just light enough where you could still see all of that beautiful white and it's dark enough to add a little bit more dimension. And you guys, that that's it. This was so easy and it probably took me just gluing and stuff like less than an hour. And then we're gonna go ahead, clean your mirror before you put it in. It'll be so much easier. And these pop right back in. They have the mirror and then they had like a backing on them. And I think Joann's actually sells these all year long. Not, not positive, but are you guys ready to see the outcome of these? Look at how beautiful. I wish I was able to hang them on a wall for you guys and show you, but we haven't painted our house yet, so I don't wanna start sticking everything on the walls, but just look at all of that detail in there and nobody would ever know, ever know. And I think those are the best DIYs that like you made them yourself, even though I would proudly say I made these myself, but hey. All right, our next inspiration piece is this farmhouse. Now, this is definitely a grander scale in the picture, but we are gonna make a really close looking one. So I'm taking this happy fall sign from Dollar Tree. And you guys, please tell me, is there like a trick to 
unwarp these. I don't even think that's a word, but I try to get the ones that are as straight as possible, but I mean, sometimes you can't help it. And this one was so warped and bowing in the middle, but anyways, we're gonna go ahead, do what we usually do, and we're taking that brown shipping paper. I already traced it, we're cutting it out, and we are gonna just put that over our image on the other side because I like everything to look finished. I don't want anybody to ever look at the back and be like, what the heck is this? Nobody would ever know that that was a Dollar Tree sign now that we're covering that up. So with this, you can use a glue stick. I like to use a hot glue gun. It's like way quicker and I feel like it wastes less material because all you gotta do is put it on the outside edge. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and paint this. Now I hopped on the bus. I did it, I hopped on the struggle bus. This brush I use to Mod Podge sometime and even though I rinse it out, I think some gets like stuck in there and it gets kind of stiff. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch it over to the Apple Barrel Synthetic Brush from Walmart. These are great, they come in a two pack and I think they're like less than three bucks. So for this sign, I'm just giving it one quick coat of the uh, Linen White by rust -Oleum. Uh, because of course, you all know, I don't like that stark white look. I don't look a super, like a super polished look. And uh, to go with all the rest of my decor, we're just doing a light coat here. So covering that up, now I'm taking my ruler and I am gonna make some shiplap lines here. And I'm just doing this with permanent marker. You can also use a black color pencil, a pen, um, you could use a lead pencil as well, works very, very good. And you guys can also create lines with painter's tape. So now that we got those, I'm taking our stickers from the Dollar Tree and I am going to cut out each of my letters. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to play around with the placement of my word. If I were just to like take them off and stick them on, most likely I would screw it up and like it would be all janky and wonky and like to one side or crooked. So then I'm taking this rub on transfer. If you see these, pick them up because I have used them on so many of my DIY projects in my videos here and they are just absolutely stunning rub on transfers. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some painter's tape. You guys know I like my straight lines. It's I just have to have the straight line. So I take the painter's tape and then we're gonna take our letters one by one and place them on. Now, these Dollar Tree stickers, they are flimsy, they are thin. So take your time when you are peeling them off so you don't end up ripping your letter. And if you can do it really neatly, save the back of them because you can use those as stencils in future projects. So this font of this sticker was just absolutely perfect for this sign. Now, the bones of this sign itself are amazing, y'all, and you can put anything. You can put this and say home or, um, I don't know. I thought I had a lot more ideas. Okay, and now we're gonna take our rub on transfer. You take the white backing out off of it, you stick it on, and then you could use like a debit card or if you have a scraper. And what's great about these is if you go nice and slow as you're peeling it off, you can just put the, um, the cover back down and then just rub it a little bit more as you can see me doing and then your image will come off but these look great you can mod podge over them and they don't go anywhere so yeah all right next step my genius idea is i took these jenga blocks because the sign is way too thin there's no way i could attach like a uh, a frame to it so what I did was I got a garden stake out of my uh, garage and I'm taking these Jenga blocks and I'm gonna line them all around my side. This is gonna give me something to adhere that frame to. Um, I am gonna use the garden stake as our frame and I was gonna use, uh, what do you call it, painter sticks, but I didn't have any long enough. I tried the Jenga blocks, they just didn't fit. So garden stakes you could get in the flower floral section of a hardware store and they are super inexpensive. Now I did try cutting it with my handsaw, that did not work. So I went out to the garage, I cut them, and uh, we are gonna attach them with some wood glue and then hot glue, again, immediate hold and then longevity with the wood glue. Now y'all know I make wood signs, right? Like I make them all the time. I, I cut wood frames all the time. 
So I cut these and at first I cut the sides too short. So then I cut them again and I cut the right length, right? Well, your girl did not play around with placement first. And what I did was accidentally pick up the short sides. That's what I did, you know, but you know, mm, it happens for a reason. Okay. It happens for a reason. And this is why during crafting, don't get upset. You just work with what you got. All right. You just got to work it out. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. I kind of got, got upset when I, you'll just see, look at me putting this bottom on and there's such a big gap. Look at that. Like they don't even touch. So I just glued it on and I was like, you got to go with it. We're not starting all over. So I do the same thing, wood glue, super glue. And then I'm going to take to hide these huge gaps. Hank, go. Sorry, you guys. I'm going to take this nautical rope and they come in three strands. So I'm taking one of the strands off there and I'm going to hot glue it to kind of like the inside and then I'm going to wrap it around. And I felt like this still went with like a rustic feel and didn't look too like, oh my gosh, why is that there kind of thing. And it covered up the huge gaps that I accidentally put in my sign. So I go ahead and I just, you could see, I wrap it like around that way it covers that too. And then I just cut the back of that nautical rope off. And then we're going to do that for all four of these sides. And this is the nautical rope, by the way, from Dollar Tree. So one, two, three, I'm counting four. This sign probably cost me like $5. And look at how gorgeous it came out. And what's nice is it's freestanding. Uh, you could also put a sawtooth hanger in the back of the frame if you choose to. And I just absolutely love how it turned out. To these DIYs. All right. Okay, we're gonna make something super similar and I don't wanna to toot my own horn, but I think mine is way better and just goes way better with my decor too. So let me show you how we are going to achieve this look. So these are the tile pieces from Dollar Tree. They are out right now. I just picked these up a couple days ago and I'm gonna take that Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint. You could use whatever paint you'd like that goes with your decor. And I'm gonna paint all three of these. I'm only gonna do one coat of this paint we're not going heavy handed on it because we want that raised decal on there or whatever you call it, I don't know. Uh, we want that to still be popping through and I don't want to put heavy coats of paint on it because then you're less likely to get those to come through when we distress this down later in the video. So we go ahead and do that with all three. I'm just using that same synthetic brush. You could use any brush, you could use a roller. I actually liked the brush marks in here. It made it look a little bit more distressed, a little bit more rustic. So go ahead and set those aside. Now I'm taking this piece of wood. It's 9.25 by 27 inches in length. And I've been watching a lot of Amber Strong lately on Facebook and she always just gets her acrylic paint spritzes it with water and then gets her baby wipe and rubs it in and uses that as a stain. Now I had to try it of course and I was actually pretty impressed with how this turned out. Now I must say that she does use um, apple barrel when she does it which I think would be a little better because this Arteza paint is super thick, so it didn't spread as easily as I think Apple Barrel will. But I will say the Arteza paint is acrylic paint made for outdoor elements. So if you are making an outdoor sign, could be good, could protect your wood. So anyways, I do this on the sides. Of course I do it on the back. I don't care if it's not showing, it needs to be finished. So we're gonna go ahead and finish that. And then we are gonna take our tile pieces and I'm taking a sanding block. And um, this is a rougher sanding block and you are just gonna distress these down. You wanna get all of those grooves, all of those little raised edges that are on there. And this comes peeking through and that bronze that is on there just looks so pretty through that white. And again, you could do this with other colors. They also have silver tile pieces as well. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and stick these on here. Now we're gonna play around with placement first. So as you're laying them on your piece of wood, make sure you're not pressing them down. Just lay them on top and look at how pretty that wood color looks with that bronze peeking through here. So of course me and my straight lines had to grab some painter's tape as usual. And gosh, my hands look so different with nails on them. They look so much more feminine. Okay, so now I'm spacing them out and I'm measuring the sides just to make sure that we got a consistent, you know, spacing going on. Now, I can't say that I did such a great job with the middle, but I tried. So go ahead and rub those on. Yeah, I didn't do a good job cleaning that up there. Okay, so we're placing that on and then I go ahead and measure the middle and I don't know how I did not get this even because on my last attempt, I. I got it pretty good. I don't know what I was doing here, but you know, learn from my mistakes. Anyways, $3, let's see, three. This project probably was like four, or no, we'll say like $5, because the piece of wood, if you went and got it cut or something, five or six bucks. And it looks so pretty. I cannot wait to get our walls painted to hang this stuff. Okay, look at how gorgeous. Oh. Look at all of that texture. You could see the beautiful wood grain coming through and it just, oh gosh. Okay, last one, last one, you guys. This is an olive leaf hoop. Oh, sorry about my lighting, you guys. It kind of looks dark in these, but this is the wired uh, hoop from Dollar Tree. They come in that three pack. And then I'm taking this greenery from Hobby Lobby. Now it's originally $9.99, but wait for this to go 50% off because I use these on wood rounds as well. And they are just such beautiful green pieces. I'll leave the item number down below so you guys can check it out on their website. Next, I'm taking my wire cutters and we're just gonna cut all of these branches off. And the reason I just cut them all off to begin with is that way I can look them over, see which ones are full, see which ones are thin, play around with the placement a little bit, you know? So now I'm gonna take my floral wire and I'm gonna cut about two inch strips. I'm gonna cut a few of them because this is how we're going to attach our branches to this wire. Now you're gonna have to play around. This, this took me some time. This I thought was gonna be the easiest one, but this one probably took me the most time because I couldn't get the branches to sit how I wanted to. So it took about probably three of these wire pieces for each branch because in order to shape it to your hoop, you have to play around with the placement and attach it in like different places. Now I did use, which I didn't film you guys, sorry, but um, I did use floral tape in the middle as I was kind of like finishing it off. And I thought about using it for the rest of this, but I was kind of afraid that you would see it. Even though it's green, I don't know why. Next time I'll probably try it though. And then again, you're gonna just play around with the placement. I probably used three branches on each side of this. And I will say that I did change it up. And instead of how the picture the Kirkland's was, they have it hanging with the branches on the bottom. And for some reason that just did not flow with me. I don't know what it was, but I didn't like it. It just looked odd to me. And so I'm gonna end up flipping this around. So after I'm done, here we go. So I forgot to film you guys and I took, I found leather ribbon y'all from Dollar Tree. One of my subscribers, Ramona told me about it and I was able to find one and, um, yeah, so I just wrapped it around where I put that floral tape. Now I'm wrapping it around. I'm gonna attach it first to the, um, the wreath itself. Then I'm gonna take that little back piece, attach it to the ribbon. And now I'm gonna take these thumbtacks. You guys buy these, I've been using them a lot in my DIYs, and I am just going to get the wire cutters and cut the actual tack part of it off. And then we're gonna use that for our detail. And it looks so, so gorgeous. I love it. It's the small details. It is the small details that truly make a piece, I swear. Okay, so taking another thumbtack, you're gonna need two. And then we're gonna put that to the side. And then I'm going to get this, it's a keychain loop. I got it out of my husband's toolbox. 
but it was all rusted and it looked cool, so it worked. And then we're gonna glue that one on the top, y'all. And that is it for this wreath. I think it is absolutely adorable. And it's nice because it's very neutral, so it could go with any kind of home decor that you have, and you can dress it up with florals if you'd like. But see, I like it this way. I don't know why, I just think it flowed better. Now I will say with that ribbon, you guys, if you put it on the opposite side, then it'll sit flush with your wall. Uh, so I wish I would have done that, but. All right, y'all, I hope you guys are enjoying this dupe video. I love doing dupes. I love being able to see something and make it for a lot less. And I like it because that's why I like to call them like inspired by because I feel like you get to put your own twist on it and customize it, which I love. So I hope you guys get a lot of inspiration. I hope it gets you guys looking at those websites, seeing what you can make your own for your own home decor. And y'all know if you're digging me, if you're digging the DIYs, and if you are digging the video, please make sure you like and subscribe. It's a great free way to help your girl out. It really does help push my video and help my channel grow. And for those of you that don't know a couple things, um, I do have another channel called Shop with Sammy where I do Dollar Tree hauls, thrift hauls, a little mix of anything. If I go shopping, you're going to see it basically. And then I do post on Unicorn Dust Designs Tuesdays. I do regular, you know, everyday DIYs or upcycles. I am hoping to start uh, posting on Thursdays. We will see. And then Saturdays is Crime and Crafting where I am just working on my own personal craft while I'm telling you about a true crime story. So um, make sure to look out for that again, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And with that said, let's go ahead and get back into these dupes. All right, so for my first one, it's gonna be Kirkland's. I saw these and absolutely fell in love with them. $80 for the pair. Y'all, I actually saw these at Tuesday morning and I don't know why I didn't pick them up because they were only like, 25 bucks. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to show you my version. So I'm going to take these containers. I've had them forever and I am going to take a stencil from Dollar Tree. Now these come in like the four packs. So you do have to cut it off of the other three stencils. Now I didn't have a floral stencil, so I chose to use this one. Um, so you can really use any kind that you want. Then I'm gonna take some painter's tape and I am going to attach this to the side, making sure I line it up. And of course there's gonna be excess on the bottom, but that's fine, don't worry about that. These bend very nicely, so I, I seriously love the way that this turned out. Okay, so now taking caulking from Dollar Tree, I cut a really good amount down on that tube so that a lot more would flow out of it. Then taking a the silicone makeup spatula, I am just smoothing this over that stencil. Now, the goal here is just to make sure you get that caulking into all of the stencils here, okay? Because we're building it up. You want to create like a 3D effect with this. So make sure you put a good amount. You don't want it like super, super flat. So just keep getting that caulking and just smooth it out. Don't worry if some falls out the bottom, you're fine. And then while it is still wet, after you're done filling all of these up, make sure you kind of check your different places. There should be no holes. Everything should be covered here. And oh my gosh, you guys, this could be done with any stencil. So it could be anything, flowers, circles. I mean, options are endless. Okay, so while it's still wet, I take it off. And then I do rinse off that stencil before I go on to the other side. So now that it's dry, I am going to put this on. Now, at first I try to like butt the stencil up to the side of what we already did, but it wasn't sticking. So I decided we're gonna put it in the middle on the opposite side. So there's gonna be a gap you'll see on the final product here. Do wait, I waited um, overnight to do the opposite side just to make sure that caulking got hard. And then we are gonna repeat the same step. So you're gonna smooth it out, make sure you get all the nooks and crannies of your stencil, take this off while it is wet and let it thoroughly dry. Now I'm taking linen white chalk paint. You could also spray paint this as well. Um, I just really wanted like the chalky 
finish for this. And I'm gonna do three coats and make sure you get in all of the little grooves of your um, caulking here so that you cover everything. And again, yeah, I had to do three coats to cover that like speckle effect going on here. And you can do this with any color. Now taking Hazelnut by Waverly, I am gonna paint the top of, the tops of the gold here and I do two coats and in the picture it has knobs on it. I did try knobs but I really liked it without and I think it's because my version is, is on a smaller scale here. All right, now taking that hazelnut, we are gonna dry brush over these. And oh my goodness, are you seeing that design just pop out at you? It is gorgeous. And you guys, all of these DIYs are definitely different than what I usually do. I don't even know what you would call these. Uh, modern, everyday, I don't know. Um, but I love the way they came out and I love that I pushed myself. I knew I was working with chemo, so I was really like, I'm gonna step out of my box here. So I hope you guys enjoy these dupes. Um, so you're just gonna repeat the same step for this. And this is how they turned out. I love them. You guys know I love texture, dimension, and I mean the possibilities with the different stencils you can use on these are endless. Please let me know what you think about these and if you're gonna try and recreate them yourself. All right, so this is gonna be another Kirkland's dupe and this one is $44.99 and we even made it around the same size, y'all. And I knew when I saw this, it was gorgeous and I knew I had to try and make it. So let me show you my version. So I am taking foam board from Dollar Tree. Sorry about the lighting. And this is actually a placemat. So I got these placemats, they were like eight for I think a dollar at a garage sale this past summer. And I've had them lying around and I was like, oh my gosh, this would be perfect. So I am lining up my yardstick here. Make sure you use a very sharp blade when cutting your foam board. If you do not, you're gonna have a bunch of jagged edges. It's not gonna be a clean line. So make sure you get something very sharp to cut your foam board with. So I cut it down, then I'm gonna cut it down this way and I left the placemat on there just so I can gauge where I wanted to cut and how big I wanted it. So now that we're done with that, I am going to um, paint this linen white chalk paint. And yes, I know it's white y'all, but the chalk paint, I, it added more to it instead of it just looking like foam board, it made it look painted. So I'm gonna finish painting this up and then we're gonna move on to the next step, which is going to be grabbing um, are painting <laughs> that white and I just spray painted it white and then I'm going to take that hazelnut brush it over give it that you know that look that we're going for from the Kirkland's dupe now I am going to hot glue this on you can already see you guys when you apply heat paint anything the foam board kind of like buckles up but we're going to fix that with our frame so I'm going to finish hot gluing this down then in the picture, I'm taking the hazelnut and distressing around it because in the Kirkland's picture, it's stark white behind the medallion and then distressed around it. So that's what I went with here. Now taking the big paint stir sticks, we are going to measure these out and I'm gonna cut them with my table saw. Now, you guys, make sure you measure every side because although it might look the same, they are not the same, okay? And so then I'm gonna go back I'm going to measure my opposite side. And let me tell you, they weren't the same size. So don't get all, all cutting happy and cut all four at the same time. Now that you have both of them, I'm gonna go ahead and take that hazelnut by Waverly, get a baby wipe, and I'm gonna use that as my stain to keep our colors cohesive with this. Sorry, the camera angle, I end up fixing it later. <laughs> so we're gonna rub this on the front, the back, the sides, because everything is basically gonna be showing. So I'm going to get Jenga blocks. We are going to stick three on each side of our foam board. This is going to give our paint sticks something to adhere to. If we just did the foam board, it, it wouldn't be that secure. So that is why I'm using the uh, Jenga blocks. So right here, I'm going to attach first, make sure the numbers of the ruler or paint stick, whatever, are inside of your picture. 
I'm gonna apply that to each side. Now make sure you're pressing down because remember the, the foam board bows up. So you wanna press it down as you're attaching your paint stick. Now with the opposite side, these paint sticks are gonna be longer because you've added something to the top and the bottom of your sign. So make sure you measure. That's why I said, do not start cutting all of them at one time. So I measured that out, we cut those out, I stained them the exact same color, and again, we're just applying the sides, and that is it. I think this cost me less than $5 to make. I mean, the paint sticks were probably the most expensive thing at like three bucks. Um, and then I just hot glue a sawtooth hanger to it from another Dollar Tree project. I signed because I'm like super professional and all. And this is how it turned out. Can, I mean, I'll to my own horn too, too, because I genuinely think this looks really high end and you can get these placemats anywhere, garage sales, thrift stores. You could even get them at like Ross and stuff like that. Okay, this one is actually a Walmart dupe, you guys. And let me tell you, if you have not looked on their website or seen their catalog, they are on fire right now with their home decor. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna dupe this on a smaller level. So we are gonna take these cloches, cloches. <laughs> they are bringing them back out and I believe these are bigger than the ones that they brought out for Christmas. I think that's what I heard on a um, Dollar Tree haul. So we're actually gonna do two of them. And for our first one, I'm gonna take these 15 millimeter sliced wood beads. Y'all, I'm gonna be using these all the time. So go down to my description box hit that Amazon store link and order you some because these are amazing. Um, and I think this is like 300 for $10 or something. So I finished that up. Then taking our beaded stickers from Dollar Tree, I'm gonna wrap that around the base of this second one just to give it a different look. And I wanted to try a couple different things. And we're gonna finish this off and then I'm gonna cut that excess off right here. All right, so after that's done, I am gonna go in. This is actually Truffle by Waverly. It's my first time buying brown chalk paint and I actually really love it for whatever reason. So I'm just taking the stencil brush from Dollar Tree, brushing those around, making sure I get everything covered. And you all know me, I love a finished product. And even though I know nobody is going to see the tops, like the inside part of these, I just have to paint them brown because I'll know that they're black and it'll drive me crazy. So I have to finish it off by painting it <laughs> on the inside. So I go ahead, we're gonna do that. And then I'm going to paint the other one the same exact color. Um, I really like the matte brown of this chalk paint. I really think it takes it to another level. That's just my personal opinion. After I'm done painting all of these and do make sure you get in all the nooks and crannies of those beads. Then I'm just taking hazelnut, doing like a dry distress on here. I think it gives it more of like a wood fill with this color. And now we are going to put all of these together, which is the fun part, right? Okay, so after I make you guys watch me paint. Now, okay, so I take this ribbon and I was like, oh my gosh, these circles fit perfectly in there. So I decided to do it this way. Okay, we are going to take the ribbon bases. This is actually moss, like decorative moss filler or something. And I wish I would have bought more because it has this like nude reindeer moss in it and I'm obsessed with it. And the green one is like the papery moss, you know, not my favorite, but I liked using these, the ribbon base because then I could easily just take it out and change it up when I want to instead of gluing directly into like the base itself. So right here, I'm attaching the moss. Then I take this succulent, I put that in there. I close it up in the cloche. I think I'm saying it right, but you will see I change that later. So for this one, hot glue and some more. I'm putting the, um, the moss on there. I really wish they would sell this like nude natural color reindeer moss because I'm obsessed with it. All right, now with the little pieces that came in this decorative bag, I at first start stacking them on here and then I'm like, okay, this is way too flat. Like there's no dimension whatsoever. There's no height. Um, so I take another DIY and remember I have these dried flowers from Dollar Tree, which they're coming back out with you guys. I just found them this weekend and there go my scissors. Okay. So use wire cutters and then I just stick that in there. 
put my dome back on. Oh my gosh, you guys, the final results of these are stunning. And then I end up changing up the succulent one, cut that down to size, and oh, I can't wait for you guys to see these. They are so beautiful. Look at these. Look at the, the beaded details on the bottom and then those dried flowers with the like nude moss and green moss. I personally think these are stunning. And remember, the cloches are coming back out, so keep your eye out. Okay, so this is our last dupe. This is actually from Pottery Barn. Yeah, I looked at a Pottery Barn website, you guys. Oh my gosh. So $59 for this, and I was like, mm-mm, I'm gonna show us how we can make it cheaper. So these are at Dollar Tree right now. And do you see the gorgeous Gorga lines on this vase? Like, we needed to do something to bring those out. So when I saw that Pottery Barn inspiration, I knew right away. So I'm taking my chalk paint. I am going to take baking soda. Now, last time, if you guys remember my video, I didn't use that much baking soda. I was being a chicken. This time I added a lot of baking soda and was so happy with the result. So with the baking soda, you just add as much or as little as you want. The more you add, the more texture you're gonna get. I am just using a chip brush here and I am making sure I get a good amount on that brush so that it's not streaky. I want it to be stark white. Now, a trick with this is if you wanted to have more texture, wait until it is almost dry, almost dry and then get some more on your brush, which I think I'm gonna show you right here. And then I kind of rub it on there and then it gives you like more of a, almost like a chipped paint effect to it. And now I am taking that hazelnut color again and I'm going over this, I'm distressing it. Well, after I'm done doing this, I'm like, oh, this does not bring out those beautiful lines and curves in this face, kind of like our dupe picture. So I get my stencil brush and I go in between all of those lines and oh my gosh, this turns out so beautiful. I am really proud of myself for stepping out of the box. I hope these DIYs inspire you to do something a little different because although they're different from like, let's say quote unquote farmhouse, like I can still use these things in my home decor. I could set up my bathroom with them. So I just really loved how these dupes turned out. I hope y'all enjoyed them as well. Oh, this is the wooden Scrabble letter board. And when I saw this, I knew we can make it for so much cheaper. So taking a Dollar Tree cutting board, I'm gonna take this sticker off, Avi, and getting a chiffon by Rust-Oleum. You're gonna see me use this a lot. We are gonna paint the front and the back of this. I'm gonna do two coats on the front, only one coat on the back. I really highly recommend if you guys use colors like chiffon or white or grays a lot, just buy the Rust-Oleum cans. It is so much more inexpensive. So now taking a chip brush, we're gonna take our antique wax and we are gonna distress this down. Now I get asked a lot what chip brushes are. They just have a really rough bristle on them and they're super inexpensive. You could get them at Home Depot, Dollar Tree, and they are great for distressing projects. So. After we're done with that, we are going to take Jenga blocks. I'm gonna take 12 total for this piece, well, this section, and I am going to hot glue them together. Now make sure when you do this that you put the hot glue on the bottom of the Jenga block. That way you don't have hot glue coming up on top and ruining your piece because nobody wants to see that white cloudy mess there. So you're gonna to continue to do this and these do come in like the variety pack of Jenga blocks at the Dollar Tree. Now we're gonna take the gold thumbtacks. I have been using these for so many projects lately, y'all. Pick them up. They are great for little added like details on projects. So these fit perfectly on these Jenga blocks, meaning they didn't go through the back and the Jenga block was soft enough that it went in nicely. I mean, I had a little trouble because these nails, y'all that work with nails, oh my gosh, it's been a while for me and learning to like readjust. I've been on the struggle bus, but I'm adapted. So you're going to do that with the remaining Jenga blocks here. And then after I'm done showing you that, I don't know why I'm so out of breath. I just walked down the stairs. <laughs> okay, so I tried using the domino pieces. They were too tall. 
So then we decided on the Jenga blocks. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple Jenga blocks and we're gonna use those just to kind of figure out our spacing here. And I'm going to use the super glue from Dollar Tree and hot glue for our immediate hold. And then I'm gonna grab a ruler cause y'all know I'm a stickler for straight lines and measuring and then measuring twice. So use a ruler here. And we're gonna repeat the same steps for the second one and the third one. Oh my gosh, if this was crooked y'all after, I would be in despair. I cannot stand anything crooked. I would literally rip this apart and redo it all. All right, so that is how it looks after. Now I got these, these are backs of like mini frames from Dollar Tree, use them during Christmas for DIYs. And I was like, hello, this is genius, if I do say so myself. So we are just going to hot glue these right on the back of our sign. And this is how we are going to stand up our little Scrabble board. All right, let's set that aside. Now we're going to take more Jenga blocks and we're gonna hot glue two pieces together. Again, focusing that hot glue towards the bottom so we don't got a messy, messy mess. All right, so make as many as you want, as many letters as you want to make. I only made enough for this project. And then I'm taking that same chiffon color, doing a messy brush on this. And now with my paintbrush still wet, I am going to dip it in the antique wax. And do you see what beautiful color this gives us? It is like a grayish brown. It is so beautiful. I love doing this color on certain projects and it tied in with the project so well. So after those are dry, y'all, I tried the rub on transfers. They were too small. I tried the Dollar Tree stickers. They were too big. So I ended up having to use my vinyl cutter to make uh, custom size letters. You could also use your own handwriting as well, especially because the lettering is so simple. So we are going to go ahead and finish that. And that is all y'all. And we probably made this for like, what, $3 versus 20. So the message on our board, this is you are seen. And I just want my entire community to know that I see you. I see your comments. I read the struggles that you guys are going through. Some of you are sick, some of you are going through depression, some of you guys are just having a hard time right now. And I want you to know that I read all of your comments and I feel you to my core. And I want you guys to know that I am a safe space for you. I'm a safe place. If you ever need someone to talk to, you can email me, contact me on Instagram, whatever. Our next one is this galvanized planter base with side handles. So this was $20, knew we could make this. So this full credit goes to Chic on the Cheap. She made a jack-o'-lantern for Halloween. I will link that up in my cards and then down in the description box for you. So we are going to take two of these bowls. They come in a two pack at Dollar Tree and then this plastic container, don't know what it's called exactly. All right, so we're going to put our uh, bowls together. So I'm just using hot glue. I wish at this moment I would have used my super glue as well because I do end up adding super glue later. So then taking our little plastic jug, I'm gonna go ahead and put some hot glue around that as well. Leave the lid on there, totally fine. Now see, I put the super glue on the rims of these because it just wasn't attaching or staying the way I thought it would. I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry. Then, because I keep everything, y'all, and I mean everything, <laughs> I am surprised I even found these, um, but they're just clear curtain, um, curtain rings, and they were perfect. So we are just going to hot glue these on. Now you do have to hold it, for quite a while just to make sure that it's adhered and it doesn't like move up or down on you. But I mean, look at that. Absolute perfection. You could also get, um, uh, what do you call it? Shower curtain rings at Dollar Tree too. And then we're going to attach the other side. Now I did make one like a little higher than the other, but I don't think anybody's going to really pay that much attention to it. So we go ahead and do that. Then I reinforce it by putting hot glue like on the top of the rings. And then they had like these little holes on the side and I filled the hot glue in there too. All right, now we're gonna take this Rust-Oleum hammered. We're gonna go ahead and spray paint that. And this is what it looks like after. Now, 
It looks beautiful. If this is your style, you do you and leave it this way. But I did not like how shiny it was. And y'all, this is going to be my first time trying this, this galvanized look. So I took Mineral by Waverly and I'm going to take Antique by Waverly as well. And I just put it in there, mix it together. And I'm using this Waverly chalk paint brush. And I am going to basically, I want to, is it, is it stippling? Stippling, stippling, I don't know. I'm pouncing the brush up and down on it basically. And then I'm getting my Dollar Tree stencil brush and I'm using that to really blend in like in between my little pounces. Gosh, I should not be a painting teacher at all. Bob Ross, I would never do you justice. So anyways, this stenciling brush is really good because it was able to get into the cracks and like behind the rings of it. But I was super impressed. I pat on my back with how this came out. Now I know you probably get the gist of this, but I wanted to show you like a sped up, just like how it all evolved because I will say that once I started moving down to the bottom, I had to pour more paint and I ended up pouring a little bit more um, antique than I did the previous time. So I had to blend that back up on top, which I actually preferred. I liked more of that brown in there because it made it look just a little bit more aged. So I followed all of that up on the back using my stencil brush to get all in those handles and just blend it all out so nicely. And you guys, that was it. That was it. And this looks amazing. Look at that. Yes, ma'am. Yes. That is what I am talking about. I was, this is my first time I've ever done this technique. And now I want to do it on everything. Like this came out so beautiful, y'all. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you've ever made one of these before, give me a membership. So make sure to look down below. Our next DIY, do you see that price tag? $36.99, not happening today. So for $2, we're gonna take this candlestick holder and this bowl, which it's red, I got it during Christmas. They do make white ones though, they make glass and they make plastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up, make sure there's no hang hair, even though hang hair got into it anyways. I spray painted it white, and now we're gonna go in with our chiffon by Rust-Oleum. And I'm gonna take this, it's just a synthetic apple barrel brush. Now for this project and basically any project on today's video, we are just loving the brush strokes and the brush strokes are gonna add so much texture to the piece. It is going to add so much to the distressing when we get there, but don't be afraid of the brush strokes here. I wanna see all of those bristles in our paint. So I am now gonna go ahead and paint the bowl. Make sure to go horizontally, not vertically. And we are also going to get the inside of this bowl. Now make sure you do two coats on each of these pieces so you fully get them covered. And then, uh, you guessed it, we are going to get Antique by Waverly. Now, if you don't find Waverly, you can also use uh, Folk Art has it, Home Decor, and Rust-Oleum. So Linda, one of my amazing subscribers, sent me these brushes. They are apple barrel chip brushes and they're like little mini versions. And I cannot tell you, like y'all, this is mind blowing. I don't know what it is, but this little brush picks up just the right amount of wax. And then the bristles, like, I don't know how to explain it, but like as a crafter, you get excited about little things like that. Like, look at this. Look at how just perfectly it distresses. Y'all, if I could find these on Amazon, I will put them in my Amazon link um, in my store because everybody needs these in their life. I'm just saying, everybody needs them. So, all right, enough about that. <laughs> Can you tell I'm excited about these darn brushes? So then I go ahead and I just distress the candlestick and then we're gonna take that super glue again from Dollar Tree, super comparable to E6000. And then we're gonna take our hot glue, attach that bowl and easy peasy Dollar Tree squeezy. It is done and that is it. Look at how rustic and I mean, I, this looks high end. I don't know where y'all shop, but this looks high end. And then I made those little galvanized Easter eggs that I thought were super cute. How, um, this is all gonna look so pretty together, but 
$2. Okay, so the next thing, do you see that price tag? $119, but we are going to make that <laughs> for way less. So we are taking champagne glasses. Yes, pour yourself a glass while you are crafting, and then let's get on with the show here. So I'm gonna take two, I know it was three, but I really didn't think I needed three. So you're gonna take the base off of these and then you're gonna put some super glue on there. Just, we don't want them going anywhere. We don't want them falling off if somebody touches them. And then we're gonna go in with that Hammered by rust -Oleum and bam, <laughs> I love doing that, that's so funny. Okay, and now taking our stenciling brush from Dollar Tree, we're just dipping it in that Waverly Wax and then pouncing it on there, just giving it a little bit of a, a rusty look, you know, so it's not so shiny. Now taking these coasters, I got four of these for two bucks at my local thrift store and they're glass and I mean, these couldn't have looked more better for this project. So again, taking our chiffon, a lot of paint in here, we are gonna go ahead and go in circular motions. Now, a tip, wait until chalk paint is like 90% dry, okay? And then get your brush again and get the paint and go back over it. And what it does is it like picks up the paint that's already on there and kind of gives it like a stuccoy, like wrinkly texture to it, which I absolutely love. And then go ahead, let it dry. And it just adds so much more depth if you're going to be like dry brushing or distressing your pieces. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna take that apple barrel brush again and we're gonna go ahead and dip it into the antique wax. If I, I guess I wanted to show you me drying that for a long time. So again, going in circles, look at this. I don't know what it is y'all, but you guys need these brushes. I need like a hundred of them. And then after we're done doing that to both of these, you guys, weren't these Kirkland projects so easy, like beyond easy, and we saved so much money doing them? Whew, yes, mama likes to save that coin. That's what's up. Okay, so again, this is the Fix It All Super Glue from Dollar Tree, and it is amazing. I picked up like three more at the store the other day. So again, super glue, hot glue for the immediate hold, stuck it on there, didn't melt. And that is all you have to do with these. So easy, so beautiful, and anybody can do it. That's the great part. And I can't wait to show you them with some candles I made in a previous DIY video. It just all comes together so well. So look at how beautiful. I love them and everything together just looks so absolutely beautiful. Cannot wait to put these out. Okay, so for this dupe, we're gonna take the Dollar Tree wood panels. You're gonna need six of them. And look at them because some of them are a little warped, so you want the ones that are as flat as possible. So we are going to grab these. You will also need some twine, 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 twine. All right, so we are gonna grab our paints here. We are gonna use black. I'm gonna paint the front and the back of these. So right here, I'm painting the back. We're gonna do it for all three of them. Then I'm going over the front and I got my wood graining tool, y'all. This is amazing. I have it in my Amazon store link down in the description box. I think it's like eight bucks. And um, it took some practice and I took y'all's advice with not rocking it back and forth and you are so right. The wood grain looks so much better. So with these, you just look at that. You just paint a coat on and then you drag it across your surface and it leaves like a beautiful wood grain on here. Look at that, you can see the top right there. Ooh, stunning. So this is how we're gonna get our faux wood grain here, which you can stain these and they do show up um, with stain, but I chose to do this. All right, now taking white, I already painted the backs of these. This is the front. And again, look at that. This one, like the white actually showed up more than any other color and it looked gorgeous. Look at this. Do you see that wood grain on the left? Hello, beautiful. Grab one of these, you guys. Start playing around with it. They are so much fun. All right, then I did the gray and at first I was like, oh, I'm too lazy. The white will look fine. No, I had to go rinse that off turn this one around, repaint it with the gray again, and then 
use the wood grain tool over it. So needless to say, this one didn't show up as much as the others, but it is what it is. All right, so after we're done with that, I am marking, I think it was one and a half centimeters in on each side. I'm going to get my drill, drill those holes. Now to drill the holes in all of the other ones, so they're in the same place, sorry for the angle here, or the lack of, um, but I just stacked them on top of each other and just drilled right through the previous hole. That way I didn't have to like worry about getting them all measured the same way and yada, yada, yada. All right, now I made these with my vinyl cutting machine, hashtag duh. All right, so um, I kept it exactly as it was in the do picture. So the white vinyl on the black, even the wording is like where it was on the do picture. And then the black lettering is going to be on the white ones. I go ahead and take this all the way up with our vinyl decals. If you have really nice penmanship, you can use a paint pen with these and that would work out great as well. Now taking my twine, I tied a knot at the end um, and then I string it through the back of the bottom one and then you're just going to string it over and you're gonna keep, well, I put a piece of tape, that way it doesn't fray as we keep doing this. So I go over and then I am gonna go under so you're just going under, over, under, over, and you're gonna repeat these steps. Now I'm not doing knots or anything like as I'm weeding it through. I only do a knot when I start off and we're gonna do a knot at the very end. Now I was focusing on spacing mine beforehand. You don't necessarily have to do that. Just make sure you leave your end longer so that you have the room to space them out. But this is just what I chose to do. So we're gonna string this all the way up to the top. Now leave a hanger, so you wanna keep some length up there so that you can hang it. And again, you're gonna do the same thing. You're just going from the bottom over top, and then you're gonna put it through, and you're gonna keep doing that until you get all the way down. This was actually really easy, y'all, and this would make a great gift for somebody, and I love the way that it turned out. So I just tied another knot and there we go. So this is how she looks. I'm really happy with this dupe. Let me know, of course, what you guys think in the comments. Um, and then you guys asked to do side-by-sides. So here is the side-by-side. -side. Ours costs us, ours is on the right. And that one cost us like $7 and the one on the left was 20. All right, here is our second one. I saw these and thought one, gorgeous, two, uh, we can totally do that easy. So I grabbed these candle holders from Dollar Tree like seriously yesterday. And we are just going to do the baking soda and chalk technique. Now, I will say after doing this a few times now, one, the chippy brush is the way to go. Two, obviously the the less baking soda you're gonna put in, the, um, what do you call it? The, not the thinner the coat will be, you won't have as much texture. So the more you put in, the more texture you're gonna get out of this. So I just put in equal parts, use my chip brush, I let them dry, and then I am going to go and do a second coat. Make sure they are thoroughly dry before doing your second coat, or like chalk paint, it's just going to peel up or pull up the first coat that you put down. So I just used my heat gun to speed up the drying process. It worked very good. And then once it was almost dry, I let the rest air dry on its own. Now you can see I'm going in with the second coat and I'm just doing this very lightly. I just wanted to make sure that the glass was covered up. And these came out probably the nicest um, with this paint technique than anything else I've done. I think I'm starting to get the hang of it, finally. Next, I'm gonna take the floral foam. I just indented it, taking my um, nail file. I'm gonna cut a circle out. Oh my gosh, cringe worthy the sound of putting this in that candle holder. Oy, oy, oy. So we're gonna just repeat this up. Now, you guys, I'm putting this lavender in from Dollar Tree. I don't know if y'all noticed, but so this I think is the older version of the lavender right here. And I didn't notice, Everett's trying to help me right here with his little hands, there he goes. Um, I didn't notice, I don't think, that they were different. So these are longer 
and the leaves are actually on each and every stem. So I start using these and filling it up. I'm trying to make sure I cover all of that foam here. Well, then as I run out, do you see these? These are so much, the actual like petal part is way shorter. The leaves are on separate stems. So for this next cup, I had run out of the other one. So I had to start kind of playing around with it, cutting off um, the leaves, sticking them on the flat. It was just... Just so you know, you guys, um, I don't know if you knew that there was a difference in the lavender picks, but here we go right here. These are gorgeous. These are gorgeous. I'm going to make so much more and put them in my, so many more and put them in my, um, my booth. I think they are so gorgeous. And this is them side by side. Ours cost, I can't see it, probably like $5 and theirs I think were, I don't know. Okay. So the next one up is the Great Bathroom Word Search. Now this isn't gonna be a complete dupe because I did not have that size. But I got these chalkboards at Michael's. Um, I think the tag actually said it was from fall. So I wait until these things go on clearance. I probably got this for $3. I have tons, you guys, like 15 of them. Um, and I am going to use some antique wax. I'm gonna to try to get that wood grain because the frame is wood. But then I realized, girl, you gotta do the actual inside of the frame. So stop being lazy, get your painter's tape out and just do it the right way the first time so you don't have to cry when the antique wax gets on your chalkboard and messes it up because that's usually what would happen if I would have sh taken the shortcut. You know what I'm saying? I know what you, I know you know what I'm saying. All right, so I just go ahead and finish that up. I do the sides as well, the inside of the frame, let it dry. And after that, oh my gosh, you guys, this decal. So I am going to grab this decal. Okay, can I just point out that I set that painter's tape up right here so that I knew where to butt up my vinyl. And then once I took it all off, I took the, you'll see, Anyways, I am using the contact paper from Dollar Tree and I remember why I stopped using it. This took literally over 30 minutes to get onto the vinyl. It just would not, like the contact paper would not take the vinyl with it. So I had to press each letter down one by one. Oh my gosh. And weeding this, y'all, mm, mm, I don't recommend it. Okay, <laughs> but... We still got the look for less, okay? So after I spend what seemed like eternity on weeding this out, and I don't know why I'm having you watch all of this either, but this is where I grab the um, chalkboard sign. And this is why I say it's not a dupe because the dupe is actually uh, longer and like skinnier here. All right, this is where my editing skills come into play and you guys are like, oh my gosh, Unicorn Desk Design, Sammy, you are like so good at editing your videos. You should edit everybody's videos on YouTube. And I'm like, oh, you guys are so sweet. <laughs> okay, that's where I take it off and then I'm like, oh, girl, girl. And if you guys notice, I'm wearing my Bloodhound Mom t uh, sweatshirt. Thank you so much, Kat. This means the world to me. Um, I think I show it to you guys a little later. Um, but I just rub this on here, you guys, and that's it. I actually found this image on Google, put it into my Cameo design space, copied the image, cut it, and then I cut it out. So um, if you guys don't wanna watch, uh, buy SVG files, look on Google for free images and you can easily um, trace them and use it that way. And then I just um, edited like the top to make it the great bathroom word search. So, all right, you guys, I think that's it. Yeah, then I start, I don't know what I'm writing. Oh, old time pottery, I was watching YouTube. All right, so here is our dupe, the great bathroom word search. And I think it turned out pretty darn good. I mean, seriously, I spent $3 on the chalkboard and I spent eternity um, weeding everything out, but it still was cheaper than the Amazon. So here is our side by side right here. Obviously, you could see mine is shorter and wider, but other than that, hmm. All right, here's the next one. Y'all, this is where I went rogue, okay? This is where I went rogue, and then I started getting all, like, flower happy, and 
it looks similar. So your girl that likes to find things on a clearance, you guys, this was $14.99 after the holidays, like fall, Christmas, all of their wood stuff goes like 60, 70% off. So I think I got this for like $5, got a bunch of them. Like I have everything else. I'm gonna go ahead and tape this off. You see how I'm like doing this the right way the first time? Yeah, okay. So tape that off. Then I'm gonna go ahead and get my craft knife, clean up the edges. I'm gonna follow the tape all the way around so we don't get on there. Now I'm taking steel gray and my baby wipe cloth. We're gonna go ahead and just create a stain because it was a gray frame on the dupe as well. <laughs> that was Hank, sorry if you heard that. He's so tired. He's had a hard day. All right, so I cut these letters off of my vinyl machine. I am gonna link some videos, y'all, where so you have more options because you can easily print these on just a regular old printer, cut them out, and then Mod Podge over them. You can also use the pencil technique and trace them and then paint them. So there are other ways than just having the vinyl cutter. So I'll link those two videos down in the description box for you if you want to check them out. Um, you could also get stencils at like your craft store. So I'm just putting these on. This is just 651 Oracle um, permanent vinyl. And here we go. There's the M. All right. This is where your girl starts going rogue here. Um, so I start with my Sola wood flowers and I will leave my referral link and I will try and find the bundles that these colors are in. Um, but I started with the grays, but then I saw this mint color and I was like, Ooh, that mint color looks great. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to go rogue. Like, I'm just going to make this how I want to. And then I didn't remember what the picture looked like. For some reason, I thought the florals were like going in different directions. But then when I looked at it after, it's definitely a circle. <laughs> so I probably should have kept to that. And I will say, so after I do all of this and I show you the picture, I did add these really beautiful skeleton leaves. Um, one of my subscribers, Julie Berg, um, ended up sending me this box full of amazing like paper flowers and leaves. So it's not in the picture, but I did add them and they look so romantic. I will post a picture um, on my community tab or my Instagram of that. And thank you, Julie, for sending me those. So that is ours. You'll see the dupe right here. So they, you see mine is like, people are probably looking at that like, what happened there? But you know what? It still looks good. Okay, so here this one is. If you guys don't already know what I'm gonna use, come on now. You have to know what I'm using from Dollar Tree, these signs. So these are my last three of these, you guys. I'm so sad. But we are gonna take these apart, easy peasy. Take this off, just rip the paper off. Those little, like the actual words break so easily. All right, you guys know I usually use shipping paper to cover the pack. Well, then I remembered I had this marble transfer contact paper I was going to use on my craft table. And I was like, you know what? This is probably a lot easier. It looks just as clean and you don't have to use hot glue. And I was just like, this is perfection. So I think I'm going to just start doing this and adding different prints on it or whatever cool contact paper I find, shelf liner, whatever this is called. So I'm going to do that for all three of them. See how you, it's going to make our back look all pretty. All right. So you guys, for these uh, uh, blah, 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 frames, they repel like antique wax. Like don't even try it unless you are planning on sanding these babies like all the way down. They have this like glossy film over them, even the chalk paint and wanted to repel it just a little bit, but I knew it was probably the only way I could paint these. So I took truffle, I painted the outside, the inside. I also painted the back as well just because I knew I'd be putting these in my booth. Well, I always do a finished product, but you know what I'm saying. So I go ahead, I, I'm using my stencil brush. I'm not trying to get like a super clean coverage on here. I want that wood to come popping through just like our dupe picture. I do two coats of white on the front of them. This is just Waverly white. You could use acrylic paints as well. Just make sure to get the two. I was trying to make it look really close. You know, I probably would have distressed the crapola out of this, um, but I was trying to make it close to the dupe, so I didn't do it. All right, so after I use my heat gun and dry it and all that stuff, here we go. 
So more decals, sorry you guys, but this is the only way we could create these dupes here unless you have some bomb handwriting, which I do not, we won't do. I mean, I do on paper, but when I try to like paint, no. Um, and then we just put these on in and I chose to do it this way because the, um, the frame actually covers a portion of like the, the back so I thought this would be easier to make sure that I get it on the right spot. And I did the sayings. I will drop the fonts down in the description box for you. And this is how it turned out. I think it is pretty darn close. I didn't want to hang them on my wall though, because I probably would have torn paint off or something. So here we go. And then I will show you our side by side of the Amazon versus ours. And then you can see the price difference as well, which is, uh, yeah, I'd rather take my price. Okay, this is the last one, you guys, and then we're done. So I did not notice that these were reversible until I put this picture on here. I made two separate ones. Okay, so for this one, you guys, we are using two of these Dollar General houses, $1 each, and take your sticker off, easy peasy with your heat gun, and these came off like super clean. Now I'm gonna turn them around. I'm gonna do two coats of Rich Black by Folk Art. I'm gonna go ahead and tape that off. Yeah, definitely didn't realize these were supposed to be reversible, but it's all right, now I have two little houses. Okay, so I am just making sure to get the actual front part. We aren't touching the roof of the houses at all. And we are gonna wait until they thoroughly dry, and then we are going to put a second coat. Same thing for the white, we're gonna do actually three coats of the white here to try and cover that up. Now I'm using my ruler. Now the dupes had these like lines in the roof pieces. And you know what? It might seem like, why, why? But it actually does add that just little bit of detail. I really liked it. So now I'm taking some eucalyptus leaves. I just take two and then I just hot glue the ends together to make a circle pretty easy. There we go. Fits perfectly. It was like the perfect size, these two little pieces. All right. So now I'm going to take my, um, my decals that I cut from my, whatchamacallit, it's called a Cricut. There we go. This one was just a heart. You guys could even draw these on. And then the font I used was Courier. So that's a pretty basic font. Um, now I am just, sorry, I'm saying I'm a lot. I'm gonna hot glue my eucalyptus on there. I'm gonna do a finger bow. I'll link the video for my finger bow, which I do in real time down in the description box. It is the best bow to know how to do because it's so easy and it looks so good on so many things. So I'm gonna go ahead. I need to cut off a leaf there to make it sit down. There we go, hot glue that on. I will put my decal on that says home sweet home. And then we will be done with this, you guys. And that was our last Amazon dupe. I hope it inspires you when you look on Amazon next time. Just search farmhouse decor and so many awesome things come up. And it definitely will give you inspiration on what you can make with some of your craft items. And here is our side by side, which is pretty dang close. I hope you guys enjoyed this Amazon dupe video. Okay, so our first dupe is this round home, sweet home wall plaque. Saw it, knew we can recreate this super easily. So I am taking, these are like, um, they're like wood rounds from Michaels. They come in a three pack. They're actually called like table top something. Um, I've had them forever. So at first I coated this with antique wax. And once I realized it wasn't drying, I knew that the two did not mesh but this would have been the most perfect color ever. So once I realized it didn't dry, I took a baby wipe, I took it right off. That's how you know it wasn't clinging to this wood round here. And um, I ended up getting Truffle by Waverly and just painting it with that. Then taking this, I think it's six and a half inches in diameter. It's one of the wood plaques from Walmart. They're 97 cents. I painted it with one coat of white by Waverly. And I'm gonna do the whole thing. You do not have to do the back of this. And then we are gonna go ahead and let that dry. Any day now, maybe not. 
You guys know I'm good at this. <laughs> okay, then taking a decal I made with my silhouette, actually, I got my uh, image off of Google and just traced it so that we can get as close to that image as possible. And now you could see this is what it looked like after I put the truffle on. So it is what it is. You can also use that wood, um, like transfer tape stuff that they sell at Dollar Tree, that would be good as well. So then I'm gonna put some wood glue on this. I am going to add some hot glue and adhere that. You can put a sawtooth hanger on the back of it. I did not do that because I felt like I wanted to add like a bead hanger after so that I could hang it in my home. So that's it, you guys. These are gonna be super easy. That took two minutes, that's insane. So yeah, you can add a sawtooth hanger to the back of it, some twine. You could even prop this up on like one of the um, like plate stands. But I think this is pretty darn stinking close. So you could still see the wood grain in there. We got that beautiful eucalyptus branch. That's what I Googled and I hope you guys like this one. Hi y'all. All right, this next one I've literally have saved on my phone for months. So of course your girl had to try to create it. So I am taking this 12 by 12 framed wood blank. These are actually from Arteza. And I am going to coat the entire thing in um, white linen by Rust-Oleum. Now y'all, if you use a lot of white, like I've said before, or gray or whatever color, get the bigger like cans of the Rust-Oleum chalk paint because they're, it's more cost effective in the long run. So there you guys go. I painted the whole thing, two coats. And then, all right, then I'm taking this canvas. It's the only way I knew to make straight lines because I couldn't fit anything in the frame. And I'm using a permanent marker. Like I said, these are gonna be easy. Now, my girl Brie from Breeze Arts, I will leave her channel down in the description box. She sent me the roll of leather from Dollar Tree. I have not been able to find this at mine, but it's actually pretty good quality. It is super thin, but it does the job. I'm gonna go ahead and take my Dollar Tree rotary blade and I am gonna cut this in to a six by six square here. And uh, here we go. This is why you guys, I need my measuring mat because I use it all the time. It might not be pretty and I can't get my lighting right to save my life, but you know what it is? what. Okay, you guys, I tried using this fabric tack from Walmart, right? Because it says it adheres to fabric and wood. So I was like, oh, great combo. Well, I mark off my, my leather here, right? Right. And then I try to push this well, I push it and then the bottom explodes out all over the place. So needless to say, I went with the hot glue, which I knew wouldn't work. I knew it wouldn't work and it didn't work. I don't know why I don't just go with my first instinct, but it peeled right off. So there's that, don't use hot glue. So then I had to cut another piece. And then I got smart and used the star bond adhesive and just put it where I lined where my square piece was gonna go. And then I lay it on there and this, this adhesive worked really, really great with this. Then what I do not show you guys is I did get my black permanent marker and put little circles on the corners of that to make it look like black nails were going through there. And lastly, I got my vinyl, which I had no idea vinyl would stick to leather, but it does like flawlessly. So if you guys didn't know, now you know. And that is it. And I love this. It's a little off center, but it's okay. I don't think anybody else but myself would pay attention. So you could see the little black circles right there look like little nails going through i love the way this came out it's so bright i love it. very modern font. all right this next one was 69.99 and uh i don't know if you guessed but what we use is the sink mat again you guys i don't know if you know but i'm obsessed with these and we are going to start off with the still gray this is by waverly i'm using my chalk brush we are going to go ahead and pounce this in and I say pounce because I want the galvanized look. So I want it to have that, it's not texture. What is it? You, I don't know, you guys. 
Then I take antique wax. This is all wet, by the way. I don't wait until anything dries. So I did the still gray. Then I'm taking the antique wax, pouncing that on there. Then after that, I take my brushed metal by Folk Art. This is gonna give us that like shiny galvanized look. I actually do two coats of this here and pounce that around again. After that all dries up for us, I am going to take this frame. It's actually from our wedding. And I was really excited that the back was blank. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that brushed metal again and pounce it on, stipple, whatever you wanna call it, on the frame. Cause in the picture, it looked like the frame was like a brighter metal than the rest of it. So I did do two coats of this on our frame to give it a brighter metal look. So after we're done with that, I trace out, I learned this from the last time, if you guys didn't see that video, trace it out first, and then you could go in with your scissors and you just cut that up. It cuts super easily with your scissors here. After I'm done with that, I'm gonna get the back of that picture frame. Now in our dupe picture, it doesn't have a background. You just see the wall, but I knew this wasn't, I couldn't staple the mat to the frame because it was too thin. So I needed something to adhere it to so it did not um, like bow out. So I'm gonna paint this, oh, that flies back you guys. I'm gonna paint this all white here. We're gonna let it dry. I don't know why I feel the need to show you guys all that paint. Then I am just going to hot glue this right on. The hot glue works super well with the mat. It adheres great. You don't have any bubbling. You could also use super glue. So I'm going to do that with all of the strips that go one way. After I'm done, I clean those um, the mat up so that it fits perfectly into our frame. And then, and then, I pop that back in, voila. Okay, now that middle piece that we have, oh, I guess I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm taking this sign from Dollar General. I'm going to kind of prime it with gray. I think it just helps a lot more to cover the black up instead of going in with like a million coats. What is up with my lighting? I do not know what is going on. I'm sorry, y'all. It keeps like changing shades when I didn't even change like the bulbs or whatever. Okay, so then I made this with my Cricut, I believe, and it says love grows here. Next, I'm gonna take my rub-on transfers. Now, I'm gonna use the Dollar Tree Eucalyptus rub-on transfers, but I know they're hard to find. Some other options are to print some eucalyptus images onto tissue paper, and you can Mod Podge it on. They also have eucalyptus tissue paper at Dollar Tree as well. So keep those options in mind if these are something that you cannot find. So these are so fun to work with. They're very easy to work with. I put two of these strips on here. I thought I wanted to add another one. I like, I go with the little one, let's see. But I was like, mm, that's too much, sis. Like, don't go there. Nope, okay. And then I am just going to hot glue this right on. I just eyeball it. Thank goodness it was pretty, pretty centered. And this is going to be our version. So I'm just giving you the angle so you can see that like it's shiny, like galvanized metal. And if you hang it on a wall, it's gonna look like the background of your wall. I love how this came out and it was so much cheaper than the Kirkland's version of this. So I hope you guys enjoy this. This next one, I think we're gonna say it's inspired by you guys. I tried my best. So for this one, I found this container literally at the thrift store on uh, Thursday. And I am going to go ahead and clean that up with a alcohol wipe, get all of the dirtiness off of there. Now I'm gonna take these pearl um, adhesives, what are they called? Um, you'll see right here. So I thought these were like the ones that are in the sticker section where like the rose peel off and then they're clear inside. Well, I come to find out these are actually on like a clear like film of paper, I guess you can say. So it's like, 
So you'll see as I've been, I was having so many difficulties because I was like, what is going on here? Why aren't these just peeling off? So you can see they're actually on like clear paper and these things are super duper sticky. So I put it on. Now, if you guys have, have ever used vinyl on glass, if you cut little notches into the tops, it curves, it allows you to curve it with the glass. So then I have to cut another piece. And just so you know, I found these adhesives in the floral section. They weren't in the sticker section. They were in the floral section with like, you know, the random flowers and the nautical robe and things like that. That's where I found these, which is kind of weird, but. So I go ahead and measure that off. I'm gonna go ahead and stick the second piece on here any day now. There we go. And I thought this would be a really good uh, way of getting that like bumpy texture that the Kirkland's one has. And this glass jar was like perfection when I found it in the thrift store. So there I go hopping on the struggle bus again and not doing a great job editing. I'm so glad that you guys like me for me and not my editing skills because y'all would have been gone a long time ago if that was the case. <laughs> because I know you guys want to sit here for like two minutes watching me uh, struggle with this second piece. All right, after we're done with that, I'm going to take the Linen White by Rust-Oleum and we are going to take a chippy brush. Here we go again. Like, did I not edit any of this? Seriously. Sorry, you guys. No wonder why my video is so long. So you're welcome for listening to me talk the entire time. Always my pleasure. All right, now we're going to take, oh, I even show you guys I clean up, that's cool. Do you see how once I put the blue mat down, it totally changes the lighting? It's so weird. Okay, so I'm taking the Linen White by Rust-Oleum. I am dabbing that into all the little nooks and crannies. That's why I like using the chip brush on these. And I gave that, I think just one coat. Then taking my hazelnut, I'm brushing it on my sponge. Now, if I could have done this differently, I probably would have used like the baking soda and paint and kind of like dabbed it in between those because you'll see on the outcome, it's more of like a inspired by piece instead of a dupe. It still looks amazing, but I think if I would have done the baking soda and paint and kind of like dabbed it in between the little pearls, it would have given us more of what the Kirkland's one looked like. Okay, our last one, this is easy peasy, it's all that frequency. Okay, so 37.49, try two dollars. Okay, so pizza pan sheet from Dollar Tree. I spray painted it in a white matte color. We're going in with our brushed metal again. I have been using this a lot. This is by Folk Art, y'all, so pick some up. Again, with my chalk, paintbrush. This is the Waverly one. They sell it at Walmart. It comes with the chalk brush and the wax brush for I think like $11 or something. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing, the stippling effect on this. I just think this gives it more depth and more of the galvanized look versus getting a brush and like coating it on there. That's my personal opinion. Um, you can also use like a hammered spray paint if you have it, but I think this is a lot more like affordable and accessible to most. So I'm gonna go ahead, do this all over. I do let it dry and then I put a second coat on it because when this does dry, it turns a bit lighter. So then I ransacked my kitchen cabinet again. My kids do not know this cup is missing. And I took Truffle by Waverly along with Burnt Umber. And I wanted to get that like red wood look, but it was coming off more like chocolate brown. So I paint this up, I let it dry. Then for the second coat, I get that Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel and I squeeze it on top of the truffle and kind of like, I don't know, like dab it in and then it gives me this streaky effect of both the colors. So it actually looks like wood grain and it gave me that more 
red look that I was looking for from the Kirkland's dupe. So I go ahead and I take that all the way around. So you could see, I'm just kind of like smearing my brush in there. I'm not actually like mixing it up. So we're gonna let that dry. Then I'm gonna come in with a domino from Dollar Tree. And my the bottom of my cup was sunken in just a little bit. So we're gonna hot glue that to the bottom. I'm then going to take my um, Starbond Thick Adhesive and we are going to figure out the middle for our cup to go on. Now, I measured this out, y'all, if you are going to try this. It was with this cup, 10 and a half inches around. And then I'm going to grab my permanent marker or whatever you have by you. I'm going to mark off where my cup needs to go back down. I'm gonna grab that adhesive. I did not need to put that much. Spray my accelerator, and this is going to bond so well to that metal, let me tell you. And we are done. <laughs> that was so simple. And let me tell you, this might be a plastic cup, but I have a sign on there, two glass pieces, and this thing was not going anywhere. It was awesome. And it, simplicity at its best, and it was $2, you guys, plus the paint. So I hope you all... Okay, so my first DIY that I'm going to attempt to recreate is by Tina. Um, she did these calendar DIYs in our Facebook group, and I knew I wanted to try and make these. So I asked permission from everybody. Um, I am taking the bamboo cutting board here. I am painting mine with rich black folk art chalk paint. From working with the calendars in the past, I know that this helps hide the numbers on the back of the calendars if they are the white ones. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and paint this up. We're gonna go ahead and dry it. Then taking the calendar page from Simply Blessed, I am just rubbing my fingers around the edge so I know exactly where to cut. Um, you guys, this is what I love about getting inspired by y'all because I would have never thought to cut the actual pages up. I always thought you had to use the whole page, but when I saw this, I was like, Tina, you are genius, girl, because I it's just, it fits. Look at it, it looks like a little stamp on the top right. Like it's so gorgeous. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take some Mod Podge here. I'm gonna do a light, not a light, it's a pretty decent coat but we're gonna do even coats. Then I'm going to take the page. So I use this roller. It did not do nothing, okay? There were so many bubbles still in here, but y'all know that doesn't bother me. So I was good, I was good. Then I'm gonna take my heat gun. I'm gonna speed that drying process up. Then since this is gonna be like a tray or a riser and these pages are so thin, I decided to put an additional layer of Mod Podge up on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and dry that with my heat gun once again. Now, little things like this, you guys, you might think we teach you guys stuff, but y'all teach us stuff. Tina added this like detail, our color around the edges of hers, and it makes such a difference. It really makes the image pop out and the whole piece look a little bit more defined. So after that, I am taking these furniture pin things. I don't know what they're called, but we're gonna take those. Um, you guys, we're gonna miss footage here because as I'm hammering this in, my camera starts moving and I have no idea until later. <laughs> so these do go through. I just hammer the backs and I glued on wood beads. So there you go. I did use my star bond for that. Then taking, this is the ISP which stain. I'm gonna stain the little legs so that they match our um, bamboo cutting board. Y'all, they have these back in stock, okay? I just saw them this week at my Dollar Tree. I actually bought mine on the um, like swap group. I bought like 25 of them when they were nowhere to be found. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and take that stain, bring it on around. Now, I didn't have the floral she had, so I think most of these DIYs, all of them are gonna be more inspired by. Um, so I am just using scrap pieces of greenery that I had in my stash. I am making sure to take like one of the little leaves and tack them down. You'll see right here. I like put the hot glue on top, place it down. Then I'll grab a little leaf right here just so it doesn't like go different directions. Now taking the Sola wood, fla Sola wood flowers. These are actually the Dollar Tree ones, y'all. Like don't skip out on them. Grab them if you find them. 
they are so great. And that is the first DIY. Look at how absolutely gorgeous this is. Thank you, Tina. Tina actually has a Facebook page, you guys. It is called CNC Designs. I will make sure to link that down below for you. And you guys, I'm going to do another one of her DIYs because I just love her calendar DIYs. I mean, all of them. But here is um, Tina's and here is mine. Really no comparison here because Tina's kills it. Like her flowers, the greenery, it's absolutely stunning. So this is more of her work y'all. And I'm going to make this little riser here. Look at how detailed her DIYs are. Oh, they blow me away. Okay. So this is the bigger stovetop cover out of the two pack from Dollar Tree. I am painting the top black, which I don't really know why I painted the top black because the photo is going to be black. Anyways, paint around the rim. I only do one coat of this and then I let it dry. Be careful if you are trying to speed up the process and using an actual like heat gun because sometimes that metal will bow. All right, now taking one of the glass candlesticks. So I do everything from my phone, so I can't, I couldn't reference back to any of these pictures. I totally thought her riser was black, but it's actually white, which I actually like. I like hers a lot more with the white candlestick. So keep that in mind if you wanna to try to recreate uh, Tina's DIY here. So after I put two coats of that, I then go over to here. I'm gonna press that down once again. And I don't know why you guys, I do that. Then I turn it around. And then I try cutting it out with my craft knife, which it's wider on the bottom than it is the top. I'm just a mess, y'all. Like, don't, I don't know why you guys watch me sometimes. Oh my jeez. And I'm trying to teach you guys. Your girl's a mess. All right, so anyways, we're gonna go ahead and finish that. Then I put it on top, of course. Get yourself some Mod Podge. Mod Podge. Mod Podge Podge and um, put a healthy coat on there, very healthy. There you go. All right, now we're gonna lay that on there, smooth it out, and I will then again speed up the process with my heat gun. We'll apply some Mod Podge on the top as well, and here I go. Yeah, yeah that can fit. Okay, so after I'm done, Mod Podge again very repetitive here with the calendars but you guys these calendars are beautiful also know that jennifer page does have an etsy and she does sell prints on etsy she also has an instagram page as well um all right now that we're done we're getting white chalk paint a stenciling brush and we are going to dry brush these you can see how it really brings out all of the grooves of the candlestick I am also gonna get this and hit the sides of our stovetop cover pan. Yeah, the white candlestick looks so much better. I'll do a side-by-side -side at the end, you guys, so you can check it out. And Tina, thank you so much, girl, for your creativity. I love seeing your projects in the Facebook group. They always inspire me. You are just so detailed, I love it. Okay, now we're grabbing more of the same greenery again tacking that down at the base and then I'll grab one of those little leaves you see it right here and tack it down up top and you'll see I put another one what I mean by like if you didn't tack it down it would start the branch would kind of go its own way do its own see how it's going to the left I don't want it to go to the left I want it to go to the right all right so now I am going to do a mix of the Dollar Tree Sola wood flowers and the actual Sola wood flowers they sent me a bunch of bright colors which i don't really use so um i kind of don't have a lot of just neutral anyways we're gonna go ahead and stick those babies on i had one more of the mint color roses this one right here we're gonna go and stick that right in the middle again i didn't have any of the florals that she used so that's why i said that i guess these are more inspired by than dupes but I don't know. I don't know. All right. Then I wanted to hide the lemons that were showing right there because you could still see the bright yellow. So I just grabbed a couple leaves, hot glued them in there. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Other tree squishy. All right. So after we're done with that, we are going to grab our candlestick, put some hot glue and super glue. And I definitely did that crooked. It's not in the middle whatsoever. So maybe you guys should measure that. 
but that is it that is the riser y'all maybe two okay i should have probably edited this but you guys know i'm really good at my editing skills look at me checking it out like yeah. all right here it is so this is with the black base. I still think it is absolutely gorgeous. I even think this would be gorgeous if you drilled some holes on the top and hung it up as a sign. That would also look stunning. I love the inspiration behind all this, all the greenery. It's just so many different ideas of using this calendar. So here is Tina's. You can see she has the white base. It just pops so much more. Thank you, Tina, for the inspiration here today. I love your inspiration. Subscriber dupes. My next creation was done by Rose McCarthy. All of these are um, will be found in our Unicorn Dust Designs Facebook group. Um, first, we're going to take some of the larger paint stir sticks. I cut the tops off right when they started to curve. I'm going to be using plaster Waverly chalk paint in all of these DIYs today. Um, you're going to paint the front and the back. Then we're going to take three of these, what are these, trays, boxes. We're going to paint all of them, like the inside, the outside, the bottom. You can leave the bottom blank on one of them, which is going to be your base. Y'all, it took me forever to find these. I was almost going to order a case online, but you get random ones. Uh, but I finally found them. I left like three for somebody else. But other than that, I took the whole shelf because I needed these in my life. So anyways, we're going to paint this. As you can see, I have like a spray bottle. I've been binge watching uh, Amber Strong and it's just an easier way for your chalk paint to glide since it dries so fast. So I highly recommend spritzing either your brush or the item with water to help move the paint along here. So we're going to finish this. Maybe. Maybe this is why the video is so long because I didn't edit any of this out. Okay, here we go. Now antique wax. I'm taking my chip brush. I always work from the outside going in so that it's a little heavier on those edges. I'm gonna do this on all of the sides and the bottom because since this is gonna be kind of like a tiered tray, uh, you will see that depending on what angle you're looking at the tray. So we're gonna do that for all three boxes. And I also do it for the paint sticks as well because you're going to see the front and the back of those. And goodness, I just, I think, you know, maybe somebody needed a lesson in painting today and that is why I chose to keep all of this painting in here. Um, so you guys are welcome. If you're new to painting, this is how you do it. All right, now these frames, I'm taking the label holders off. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these frames because I've taken the label holder off of like all of them. Um, but I did not have any um, drawer pulls. So I was like, you know what? This would be a nice little added detail since I don't have any. I'm using painter's tape so I could line up exactly where it's gonna be. I measured five inches in on each side. That way I know exactly where to put the next one and I don't have them all wonky. So these just screwed right in. You gotta apply some pressure, but they do screw right in. I'm gonna do this for the other two boxes as well. Voila, I didn't make you watch me do that. Now we're taking our paint stir six. So I was so inspired by roses because of this. Like just how she angled the paint stir sticks together and like gave it, I don't even know what to call it. It's like almost a um, lighthouse effect. I don't know, but it just really appealed to me and inspired me. So I wanted to make my own. So I used hot glue and wood glue there. Let's get that. I wanted that longevity. And now I'm gonna lay this down and find where I want my other boxes to go. And this actually is gonna go in my booth. I'm really excited. It will house all of our little, little pieces. So once I find out where to put that, I'm gonna mark it with the pencil. That way I know where to put like my glue and it's not a hot mess like me. And we apply that on there. That kind of looks crooked, does it? No, no it doesn't. That's just my eyeballs. Okay, uh, that's just my shirt. If anybody doesn't watch the bloopers then you won't know what that's about. Okay, anywho, and that is all you guys. Rose, thank you so much for this inspiration. I love how 
it looked, one, how easy it was. And I just want to say thank you for inspiring me on this DIY and for giving me permission to recreate it because yours is absolutely amazing. So again, this is what hers looks like. I love, love the drawer pulls on hers and the whole color. Amazing. Thank you again, Rose, for this inspiration. So our next one is by Emily Elena. You guys, first, I mean, look at this. It's absolutely gorgeous. I don't make wreaths. Wreaths aren't my thing at all. Not my thing, but I wanted to attempt it. Sorry, this looks like kind of furry, furry, blurry, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, I'm taking this heart sign here. This is from a Valentine's Day. Save those, you guys. We could use them as angel wings later for Christmas. You could use them as bee wings. Tons of options. Save them. Okay, so now I'm going to take this. We are going to um, paint it plaster. Let's see if I make you watch all of this. I'm just taking a stencil brush from Dollar Tree. I'm going to do a messy coat. And remember, you guys, you do you. That is what's so fun about being inspired and creativity. Um, I think it's funny because y'all think that I inspire you. You guys inspire me. I will, I look, I might not comment all the time, but on my Facebook page, our Facebook page, um, I watch, I look, I get so inspired by you all. Um, so now I'm taking my vinyl decal. Welcome. Yeah, this really looks blurry. Sorry, you guys. Um, I'm going to take this. We are going to put that on there. Easy peasy. Now I'm going to attach this to our shipping paper cut that out just in case somebody saw the back of it it'll kind of blend in oh and that grapevine wreath that I'm going to show you I did spray paint it white off of camera <laughs> I put pipe cleaners on but this grapevine wreath was so tightly wound um I could not get them through the branches so I did have to revert to hot gluing this which I secure down later on like the, that side anywho all right, so this is where I'm not really good with wreaths, but she really inspired me because in, um, in Emily's wreath, she used all different kinds of greenery, all different kinds of flowers. And I am sometimes really like one track minded, one minded track, I don't know what I'm saying, um, where I feel like, okay, well, all the greenery has to be the same. All the flowers have to be the same. You can't mix two flowers, you know? So it was really awesome to get inspired by hers and kind of know that like, you can try different things out. You can mix different things. And seriously, I messaged her right after I was done with this and told her like, thank you so much. This is probably one of my favorite DIYs that I've done. Um, so you guys can see, I'm just sticking these in here. I'm not even using hot glue at this point because like I said, the branches are so tight. I'm like having to push like super hard to get these to stick. Then I'm taking, oh, I love these. I forget what they're called, flocking balls from Dollar Tree. I can't believe I'm already using them, but y'all look at, these make me smile. Look at how pretty they are. Um, I took the little leaves off that come on them. I will say, take the ball off, like the actual long stem, place some hot glue. I'll show you a little later, later um, because they do come off a little easy. So I am gonna put these, um, the light blue, the yellow, and the burgundy of these flocking balls throughout here. Again, I didn't have the florals that she had, so I was just going with what I had. Um, but, oh my gosh, this looks so cute. And I will say, I didn't picture it, but after I was done, I looked back at her picture and she had like these purple, like lavender flowers. So I did end up um, adding purple in there later. All right, so now a bow. I didn't have the same ribbon as her either. <laughs> These are definitely inspired by. So I'm cutting three strips here. I am just going to hot glue them together at the ends. This is a super easy bow, you guys. Make sure you get zip ties. I'm gonna just pinch them all together here, get my zip tie, close that off. Don't close it too tight um, because then you wouldn't be able to move it if it was uneven. Once you know it's where you want it, that's when you tighten it up. Then I take this, it's called burlap garlands. I'm gonna cut some dovetails. We're gonna put that behind our bow, gather it up again, get another zip tie, zip tie that up, zip, 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 zip it. 
exhibit exhibit a <laughs> okay anyways what movie is that from comment down below all right so then we zip tie that up and we're gonna take the twine just like she did and wrap that around tack that off and then we're just going to hot glue that baby right on there and i love how she like positioned the plank kind of lopsided the bow lopsided something totally different that i would never have done myself like even just positioning them lopsided because i i'm like oh no it needs to be straight you know what i'm saying i just love this you could see the addition of the purple flowers in there thank you thank you so much emily for this inspiration because it is definitely one of my favorites to date so far um i hope you guys like it too and definitely go to our facebook page and check out all of the other inspiration there all right this last one is by wendy hart now i did mine a little differently uh, again, I work from my phone, so I didn't realize she used five. I used four. <laughs> so I'm using these arrows from Dollar Tree. And if you just pull the ribbon off the back, the staples actually pop off like super, super easy. So we are going to grab these, pop it off. After you're done, I am going to paint them with the plaster. I'm just doing a messy coat on all of these. There are holes from the staples, but those will end up being covered so I'm not worried about them. I also forget to cover the back until after I was completely done. And let me tell you what a chore that was to do. So you guys, after you're done painting, put the shipping paper on the back. Then I'm going to take two of these crates. Now in Wendy's inspiration, she has the Spanish moss, moss on the bottom, almost like it, the flowers are growing out of the ground. However, I wanted to put this in my booth space and I knew people would be picking it up. So I didn't want that Spanish moss kind of you know, uh, flaking off over time. So that's why I decided to go with the crates. So then I'm keeping with the theme of everything, taking my antique wax, um, distressing it down on the side, uh, do the same thing for my arrows. Now we are going to kind of piece this together. So again, wood glue, then I'll do some hot glue in the middle for the immediate hold, piece those together. Then I'm gonna line up my arrows uh, behind our crate here. Measure off our paint stick. I go outside, cut that, I paint it. And now I'm gonna start from the outside, work my way in. You see, I didn't finish the back. I can't believe I didn't realize that until after. Anywho, so, um, so yep, we're just gonna hot glue those on there. This was such a cute idea. It was an easy idea. It makes such a statement. I love that you could change out the florals by season. That's like the best part of this. And um, Wendy, just thank you for inspiring me for sharing your creations on our Facebook page because I absolutely love this. I love the way it turned out. We're gonna stick that right on top. Then I am taking some floral foam. I'm going to stick that in there, just hot gluing it to the bottom. It's gonna take a next, another piece. And then, so I tried putting like I was trying to stay with the theme of the wreath. So I was trying to put like greenery in there with the flocking balls. Well, girl, that did not work. That was like hot mess central. Look at my little ladybug, she's so cute. Okay, so then I decide, you know what? Let's go back to Wendy's inspiration. Let's get that Spanish moss out. I stuff that on the top and then I do kind of go back around and do these sides. Now, at first I'm using them without their leaves but I end up taking the leaves that I originally took off, put them back on and they look so cute. It looks like they're just sprouting out of the ground. I mean, that's what I don't want. Anyways, um, so stinking cute. I finished that off and that's all I decided to put. I thought simplicity was best here. And of course, like I said, as the seasons change, you just change out those crates with different florals. You could put leaves in there. I mean, anything. And you guys, that is it. Look at how cute this is. I love those walking balls. A subscriber said you could also turn those into garlands. So you better know that I'm going to be hunting for these again and buying 
lots of them. So let me show you the side-by-side -side of mine and Wendy's. Here is Wendy's. It looks absolutely amazing. Do you see how hers looks like the flowers are sprouting from the ground? Absolutely love it. Thank you guys so much. Let First me know what dupe is this hanging plants are $110, y'all, and we are gonna make it feel like nothing. Is it a different shape? Yes, but we are gonna get this pretty similar. So, you guys, if you can find a round box, this is gonna be absolutely perfect and probably dead on to the dupe. I didn't have a round box, so I used what I had on hand, which was this box that I found on Mother's Day. So I believe these were supposed to be like purses, I guess. Um, I'm taking the little flower decal off on the front. It actually came off pretty easy. It didn't rip our paper. Then I'm gonna take my craft knife and I'm gonna cut the top of our boxes off. So the top of the lid is coming off right there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom half. Now, this is encased in paper. So on some sections, I did have to kind of like glue the paper back down. And then you can see right here, cutting downward, gonna cut across. Now we have a nice hole on the top. So after we're done with this, we're going to grab a ruler and we are gonna mark some holes on the side. I do half an inch in on each side, taking an old school hole puncher. And then I'm gonna put my lid back on and I am going to mark where I'm gonna punch a hole so that it just lines up perfectly. And I'll show you again on the side half an inch in on each side. I just mark that with my permanent marker. Use our hole puncher, one, two, bada boom, bada beam. Okay, then I put that lid back on and then I'm just gonna mark where that hole was, punch my hole and we're good to go there. All right, so next we're gonna take Cashew by Waverly. I'm gonna give the entire thing two coats, but I'm gonna get this front part three coats because this is where we're gonna paint our design. So we're gonna go ahead and do that we're gonna let it dry. Then we are gonna take Rich Black by Folk Art and I am gonna take a old makeup brush. I don't throw away anything. And we're gonna go ahead and paint our design in. So um, you do not need to be an artist to do this, you guys. You just need a somewhat steady hand and you got this. So I am just taking it. I'm trying to stay as close to the design as possible. Now keep in mind, the design is round. It's meant to look like a rainbow on the other one. This one is a little bit more awkward of a shape, but I make it work and I still think it came out looking very chic, very like modern boho. And I really, really love this piece. So we're just gonna keep coming around with this using a steady hand, steady hand. <laughs> yeah, you guys. Uh, <laughs> Woo. And um, these actually come, and this is the large version, a medium and a small. I really want to take the medium and small and make two other planters, but without the hangers on them so that they sit on a shelf. I think it would look so good. All right, so now we're going to finish this up. I'm just connecting the sides. Easy peasy. Let that dry. Now we're going to, Everly uh, colored me these baby alive pictures. Aren't they cute? All right, now we need to glue the lid on it. We don't need our succulents and stones falling out of there. So we're gonna glue that lid on there. I'm taking some nautical rope. All I did was take it apart to get thinner sections of it. I'm gonna feed it through our holes we created, tie it in a knot, and then I'm gonna take a second one. I made sure that they were the exact same size so we don't have a lopsided wonky planter. And then we're gonna feed those in and then you're gonna decorate it to your liking. And that's it, you guys. I think this looks, I mean, if this was round, it would have been like a dead on dupe for the West Elm planter. But you know what, we made it work. And if you have these, if you have square ones, you can do it all. And look, I added some black stones from Dollar Tree. They're beautiful succulents. And I love the way that this turned out. I cannot wait to make more of them. Let me know what you think in the comments. All right. All right, our second one is this terracotta vase, $258. Now, ours is on a smaller scale, but you know what? We're making it happen. So I'm taking this hurricane glass vase from Dollar Tree. Now, I didn't have anything that was like super
solid like the um the dupe picture so i thought nautical rope would be like the next best thing let me know what you would have used instead of this so i'm just taking hot glue y'all i don't know what i was thinking we know hot glue pills right off of glass so do yourself a favor and use some super glue mixed with your hot glue don't have them touching but you know you know you're picking up what i'm putting down I just was not being smart right here. I was all like happy and like, yay, I'm making this and it's gonna look exactly like it. Okay, anyways, we're gonna wrap that around. They do not touch. And then we are gonna grab some Jenga blocks after we are done with this any day. This one, you guys, these are like super easy to do. So easy, it's crazy. I feel like they go by in a flash of an eye, is that what you say, an eyeball? I don't know. Okay, so now after finishing that, we're gonna take our Jenga blocks. These were the perfect size for the height of the vase. And I'm just gonna stick them on the bottom and I am just eyeballing the spacing. I am making sure though that the top Jenga block and the bottom Jenga block are lined up with each other so it doesn't look all wonky. So I'm gonna carry that all the way around. Now, I forgot to film me spraying it with the terracotta spray paint, but I will show you it in the next one. So you guys, this was my version of the West Elm vase or planter, I should say, and I think it looks pretty darn good. Smaller version, but I think we did a pretty good job on this one. All right, our next one, you guys, okay, $119, I cannot wait to show you. Cannot wait to show you here. All right, I've had these forever, probably like two school seasons ago, and they have been sitting down in my basement. I've had no idea what to do with them, and when I saw that picture, it was like, oh, and I knew, I knew what these were meant for. So we are gonna take these apart, do not try to take the white part off of the back of them because it cracks. Yep, there you go. Broke them. Let's just stick that in and pretend like it never happened. So we're going to grab some Fix It All Super Glue from Dollar Tree. I'm going to put those around the rim. Then I'm going to get some hot glue. Put that in the middle. We're going to press those two together. You're going to do the same thing for the other two. After those set up, we are going to take them on outside and we are going to cover them in spray paint. So I'm really excited. Uh, you guys, if you do not have this spray paint that I'm going to show, you can also use the baking soda technique and then just mix some paint colors to get a terracotta effect. This is by rust -Oleum. I got this at Home Depot. You guys, this stuff covers so well. It dries so quick. It's amazing. For the next planter, I actually primed it in gray first to make sure that I would cover the pink and then sprayed it in ivory. All right, you guys, now that we're done. So in the jute picture, the like jute is actually inside the planter. However, that image didn't have like this middle piece we have going on. So I couldn't stick it in one side or else it would be lopsided. So I tied a knot on the ends of my jute and I just attached it to the side. And then I'm just going to bring that hot glue up just a smidge right there, just to give it some kind of support. And then I'm gonna bring it around the other side. Look at how good that terracotta looks. Oh my gosh, I love this. All right, so then I'm just trying to match it up here to make sure that it's, you know, even, you know, like, yeah. Okay, I can't believe I had these. Like, I was like, this is what you were destined for. Were these dupes? All right, you guys. So I just do the same thing to the white ones. I add some greenery to these. I wish I could have hung them a different way to really show you like how dead on these look to the West Elm ones. Um, so you guys, when the school season comes around again, you, sorry, that's Hank, he wants outside. <laughs> um, so when school season comes again, pick these up because they make beautiful, beautiful planters. These are next dupes. I saw these and there was something about them. I knew I could make them and I'm excited to show you how. All right, so I'm taking these discs. They're, they were from the kids section. 
these plastic uh, cups, both of these are from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take my detailed um, glue gun and we are gonna go ahead and line the rim of the disc with this hot glue. Now you don't have to be like super, super exact because we are gonna cover this up with textured paint, um, but you know, try to be somewhat neat. Then go ahead and just lay your glass back on there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and line the inside just for that added support. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the opposite side. I will say when we do glue these together, I wish I would have put a couple like pebbles in there just to give it a little bit of weight. So maybe keep that in mind. So now with these discs, I'm just gonna glue these on together. Voila. All right, so that one is, no. Then I take my craft knife and I clean up the like glue that ended up seeping out and it just kind of cleans it up, gives it some clean lines. How many times am I going to say clean? I don't know. All right, then we're going to take some other bowls. These are straight from my kitchen, y'all, like, but don't worry. They were like the four for 97 cents at Walmart bowls. Glue those together, then taking another one of my kids bowls. It was for the, in the name of crafting. All right, you guys, go ahead and skip this part. I did this because I was trying to use a spray paint. It did not end up working out. And uh, yeah, so don't, don't just cut this out. Don't worry about it. Um, I had high hopes for a spray paint. It was like a textured spray paint. Uh, I used probably more than half of the can and it did not cover anything. It was so runny. So I ended up just going back to our baking soda and chalk paint. So you guys, a couple tips. I think that this baking soda and chalk paint goes on way better with a chip brush. Um, I also realized after coating the inside of this, you need to make sure that you do like a base coat because it will still show through depending on how much baking soda you mix with your chalk paint. So I used like a half and half ratio. Loved the consistency here. And we are gonna go ahead and just cover this entire thing with our um, baking soda paint. Now y'all, after I do the base coat, like I said, I'm gonna do, I believe, two coats of the cashew chalk paint on the outside of this. And oh, you guys, the spray paint was a hot mess. I ended up doing it for the other one that we made, um, but I end up doing this technique over it because it was just, it was a hot mess. All right, then I really wanted holes in her baby bottles, so we had to take a break for that. Okay, so I'm so excited to show you this. So I learned this, Chemo Craft, he, on his mystery box challenge video, he did this thing with pepper. Yes, household pepper to get like this speckle effect. And I was like, mind blown, how genius is this? I mean, you guys, even farmhouse, like when we do the speckled eggs and things like that, how we flick the paintbrush, never again. Oh my gosh. So I, sorry, I give on, I'm so excited. Um, so I'm just using the baking soda mixture. And then while it's still wet, I just dust the pepper on there. It does not fall off. It cleaned so well to the wet paint and it gave it this gorgeous like stone look. It even adds a little bit more texture because you could kind of see it like flaking off. I don't know. I just thought this was cool. I was super excited to show you. I'll leave Chemo's channel down in the description box for you guys as well. And you guys, that's it. Like I said, I did the same thing for the other one and this is how they turned out. I think they look so, so cool. The texture on these, I wish I could really get like the true look of them. Look so amazing. Hi everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. Today I'm super excited because I am linking up with Christy Creates to bring up. Christy Create Shape for Cheek Challenge. Okay. 
Hey everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. I am super happy to have you here. Obviously, you can see it. Um, today I am co-hosting the Chic for Cheap Challenge with Christy Creates. No. Hi everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. I'm super happy to be here with you on this Monday, not my usual post date, but today I am co-hosting the Chic for Cheap Challenge with um, DIYs. Yeah. Are you gonna let me work out? Huh? You keep distracting me. Yeah, you keep jumping up. You got yourself in paint, didn't you? Didn't you? No. Hank. Hank. You say hi to everybody. You're so handsome, but you're so bad. See, that's this is what I'm talking about. Oh god. <sighs> What I had to go through. Third day. Third day to start. Ow! Gosh. Huh. He's based. Huh. No, you're not. You're the most gentlest thing. Yeah, right. He. Oh. <laughs> but you're completely. No. MD. <laughs> Shine on lip gloss by Flower Beauty. Oh, of course, the Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree doesn't always do you dirty, you know? Sometimes there's some good finds. <clears throat> you fine. You're fine. Okay. laughter on this channel. If that is something you're into, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. With that said, let's go ahead and nope. Mm -mm. A good day. Second one of the day. Let's change out a little bit of everything here. Work smarter, not harder. So we'll go ahead and record this for Let's next change this video. Video, video, video. Oh, your eyelashes look good. All right. Change your lip color. I love that pink Valian. And if these come out in different colors, I'm grabbing them. These are gorgeous. Nipping on the teeth. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh gosh, these are so beautiful. I cannot believe. I used to wear big earrings all the time when I worked in retail, and now I feel like it looks crazy on me. I don't know why. Okay. Hey everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. Today I am bringing you guys one of your favorite DIYs, Kirkland dupes. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump in to these awesome creations. This way to my backyard. And then you got this. I mean, we can't be perfect, right? We gotta have some flaws. Like, I got like guns right there. It's like guns to gum, you know? <laughs> That's all right. I'm not 20 anymore. I have an excuse. I have an excuse. No, I don't have an excuse. It's called my mother. That's my excuse. This is my mom. Or it could be just not working out. I don't know. 
I like how I talk to the camera. Like I'm talking to my subscribers that are not here. I created today and I also wanted to be... <laughs> Okay. Hi everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Desk Designs. My name is Sammy and today I'm bringing you guys one of your favorites, Kirkland Dupes. I am so excited to show you what I recreated from their website. And I also wanted to say a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I will be telling you more about them later in this show. No. Oh God, this is going to be forever, huh? <sighs> that only took five minutes to do. Oh, I can't wait to do yoga. I need it. I need to like, namaste. Namaste out of my way. I didn't like that. <laughs> namaste is like <laughs> Okay. Okay. Get to rest get that. Get to rest get that. It's like one of those, like, where you go. No, my face already dropped. I could like, feel it. Just like, okay. What are you doing? Can you sit? Sit. Oh, you're such a good boy. Do you know how much people love you? Okay, and then you go like you have to talk. Just sit down. Sit down. All right. Oh, you're so happy. Are you getting food right now? Okay. Probably not the fanciest thing to leave up there. Not like I'm fancy. All right. Either my boobs are lopsided or it's the shirt. Here we go. We'll blame it on the shirt. Stuff is good, but seriously, it's absorbing right into my lips like toast on butter, butter on toast. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. I'm a mix. Why do I hit besides any cavities? Oh, uh, it's right there. It's like chicken. You guys are so welcome that I am as classy as I am because you're just welcome. What was the first one you did? Okay. All right. We have to take him to the vet. We don't know how. He's very anxious. Oh my, oh my little baby boy. <laughs> Can you see the bee stuck in my teeth? I have don't a good like life. any of these. You guys will probably see me wear these this version of the Walmart shirt like a million times in my videos this summer because you can't talk about that close. So everything's on repeat. Oh <coughs> I'm thinking about clueless. And when she opens up her closet and it moves. Oh such a hard life. Okay. What are we doing? We are episode two of Rat. Can I be like Bailey Syrian and have that be like my 
theme song, how she has that. I, I don't even know what hers is, but. That would be mine with an end part. Okay. Lynn's brand. Who's there? took like 12 minutes. Girl, you better hurry up before the painter comes. Okay. Okay. You're going to do this. Okay. Bye. You okay? Make sure to like and subscribe. Bye. It's not like take it to looking up instead of like down. Like, is that there we go? I don't know. Did you guys catch that on Facebook? <laughs> ah! Okay, wait. No, if I go too close, I'm just gonna chop off my head. You would say I don't have wrinkles. <laughs> what are those? Okay. They're like they're big brothers. attention to your phone this looks dark but it's probably because i'm too lazy to move that light anywho okay why are you like <laughs> move like that <laughs> okay when you're a tall lady you can't go to a medium you gotta go for the large okay Stop talking to yourself. Let's go. <sighs> I feel like I have a booger, right? White. Oh boy. I made that like root touch up spray. Cause this is like where I park. I can't park down the middle. That looks weird on me. <laughs> I've parted this way for so long. This wouldn't even sit straight if I wanted to part in the middle. Hey everyone. Oh my gosh. I look so weird. Oh my gosh. You can see all my grays. Doesn't that look so bizarre? I feel like I look, oh my gosh. Gosh, that is just so weird how like just parting your hair. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up <laughs> if you like the uh, the parted down the middle. Now I'm going to have like no thumbs up <laughs> on this video. Okay. All right. Anyways, I get a large in the other. This one feels a lot more fitted than the other one, and I don't like fitted. This feels like a schmedium. Um, don't know how I feel about that. Maybe it's because I'm wearing a bra instead of a sports bra. Oh, 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 that fly. Something about Mary right there. Okay. Let's do this. Wow. Um, 
I'm just not used to wearing shirts that are fitted. This is like making me uncomfortable. Okay, all right, get over it. It's cute, it's cute, just a little, just the girls, all right? Don't act like y'all haven't been there. This, this amazing calic in the back of my, it's just amazing. Who has time to blow dry that down? Not me. Okay, let's go. I want, I want to show that, but then I don't want my, <laughs> it is what it is. Okay, let's. Okay, comments and that, no, burkered. Frickin' frickin'. Okay. That was pretty lame. And now the hair goes back up. Good thing there's ruffles there because I'm pretty sure I need to shave my armpits. Pretty sure. You know you're positive that you need to shave your armpits. And we need to figure out what's going on with this shirt here because, um, did your boobs get bigger? It's not, no, that's not happening. That's a lie. Um, I felt like there was something else I was supposed to say in this video. Nope, dupes, less dumb. That's it.